Yeah, well, Oddities is in uh, Calgary, Alberta, Canada. Uh, it's, a, it's both a museum and, uh, and a recording studio. It's kind of a living museum. The idea is to make it a, a refuge where people can come and get away from the city. Kind of like Caribou was in Nederland, Colorado, you know, the Honky Chateau, Strawberry in, in Orville, France, you know, all these places that, are, that were designed as a place where you can get away and disconnect from the rest of the world and work just on the music, you know. Don't worry about what's going on down the street, work on the music. Concentrate on these new instruments, concentrate on this, this, in, this studio as an instrument, as Eno would say. Oddities is, is, was formed to primarily concern itself with the artifacts and uh, you know the 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 actual uh, object <laughs> or whatever you want to call it, the instrument result of interests in electronic music. RCA theremin from 1929 forward to synthesizers built two years ago. Uh, since synthesizers built two years ago are fairly easy to come by, we've concentrated in the last 10 or 15 years specifically on the older stuff because it's becoming less available and it's getting harder to repair, restore, and conserve. The idea was to take examples of, of uh, technology as it happened that was pivotal or that defined a whole genealogy, you know, that defined a new branch of the tree. Uh, when when uh, Lev Thermin discovered heterodyning uh, coil oscillator technology from radio, his interest in radio, we get the theremin and we get his, his uh, recognition and implementation of spatial controllers based on you know, sensors that, that, sen that re react to, to the mass of your body. That was pivotal and that became pretty much the beginning of electronic music. So we had to include a 1929 RCA theremin to show how that worked. And it had to be a working one. So we spent a lot of money and a lot of time restoring one to period you know, accuracy uh, because it's kind of slow. The volume antenna is a little bit slow on those because it uses an old U20 tube that, you know, it's slow. It's not like a modern Moog theremin, but it sounds amazing. So, so I went back to the earliest stuff first and have and been, been bringing the Oddities collection forward in time, trying to restore these instruments with the resources we have, uh, which by resources I mean equipment, you know, components, uh, restoration talent, uh, you know, um, schematics, design drawings, all the documentation that went with it, when possible the people that actually designed the instrument in the first place to get their, you know, not just what they did or how they did it, but why they did it. You know, so I, cause, because I think that uh, the instruments themselves are the bait. The instruments themselves are the, are the reason we go to uh, Don Buchla to talk to him. And, and, and what we get that's most valuable, which, which will most serve the future of, of musical, music, music and, and electronic musical instrument uh, design, production, you know, whatever, uh, is what Don thought about it. Oh, the, the, the output of his brain is actually more the schematic than it is the instrument. And his design drawings speak more towards the methodology than the instrument does really. We've put a lot of attention on the documentation because that will actually tell engineers 100, 200 years from now what the thinking was behind it. So maybe with the, the, the contemporary abilities at, the, at that time, they'll be able to get closer to what he did than just by looking at this instrument.